All right, so I have Blake here. We're gonna to try to fly a flight in the sim that we did in the real airplane. So I have the video queued up from the real airplane. Sim right there. So far, it's working. In the flight plan menu, or flight plan page, or file rather, In flight plan it? file, if you push menu, it'll give you the option of inverting and the that's, Is that a thing there too? And yeah. now you can just turn it around and come so back right here. So that right, is okay. cool. works. So that's a nifty little... And that's again, these are the kind of things that you want to see if your simulator will do. That's why I'm recording this so I can go home and duplicate Oh my god, we're, it's, it's like I planned it. It's like awesome. I planned it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's launch. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I don't know why I'm nervous flying a sim. Well, it feels real, right? I mean, well, that's what's cool. This episode is going to cover the first real session using this awesome home sim that I'm lucky to have. Now, for some of you guys that are really familiar with sims or with the particular avionics that we've got here, you might find it frustrating to watch us stumble through, but I would appreciate input and any help or suggestions on better ways to do things or some setup tweaks that we can apply. Anyway, this is another episode from the Instrument Rating Status Vlog, so enjoy. Let's do what Dennis said, so okay. don't set the approach yet. Right. So let's set the flight plan to that one. You can make your life a lot easier by having a flight plan, and a lot of people typically go direct to. Uh, it won't help you with. It won't help you with a SID. Okay, so what did we just discover that um, it did default back to your location when you cleared out the previous flight plan? When there was a flight plan in there, mm -hmm. and I hit clear, you say yes, then by default the first waypoint is where you are right now. Right. So if you load the flight plan, and with the Garmin already knowing that we're here at Burlington, the nice thing is when you push flight plan, Burlington's already preloaded. Yeah. All right, and then you want to do it CYHM. Yeah. And you're navigating pretty good. You know how you're doing the big and little knobs? Yeah, kind of. I get confused still sometimes. The way I was, uh, someone told me that it seems to have stuck is to treat the big knob like moving, moving the mouse. Okay. Little knob like making the selections. Okay, cool. I should know my alphabet, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> so Proceed. we're going to Hamilton, then put in Hamilton Airport and have it ready because now when you ask it to give you a departure, it'll know that it, you want a departure for Burlington. All right, so that's the way we did it with Dennis as yeah. far as setting up. See if the ZBA departure is there actually. Under procedure? Yeah, we got a high ZBA, yeah. so now. Um, procedure. Yeah, proc down here. Departure is already highlighted. Yep. Okay. Enter. In a previous episode, I flew an SR-22 with my friend and mentor Jim. A simulator helped him get comfortable in this thing. This is the last thing you want to be thinking about. You want to be thinking about how do I controlling the airplane in the absence of an autopilot? And how do I keep one hand flying the airplane while one hand is looking for information to verify what I'm doing or looking down? So physical and mental and, right and if you more you get to muscle memory the less thinking you're doing about which button is it again how long do you think it took you to get comfortable with the g1000 about three months i didn't have access to the plane every day this is his home setup he's done with it now and has offered to give it to one of you guys hey steve greetings from florida well i know your viewers have seen us in a couple of vlogs and certainly seen us flying the cirrus uh, sr22t but frankly it all started here on a Redbird TD2 simulator that I used to practice on long before I ever owned a Cirrus. And it was certainly part of my IFR training and certainly part of my confidence building, getting used to not only buttons and the switches and just the general layout of a, of a Cessna aircraft, but also getting used to what to expect in certain flight conditions and certain configurations. I'm hoping that this machine here finds its way into the hands of somebody that's either time constrained or financially constrained or just frankly an aspiring IFR pilot and goes on to join us all in the system and be part of the regular flying community. I want to also thank Sporties for being such a big part of shipping this from here in Florida to wherever it ends up in the country or elsewhere. So with all that being said, good luck to all those that enter and uh, blue skies. When you're using a GPS for navigation and for approaches uh, or for departures, you can make your life a lot easier by having a flight plan. And a lot of people typically go direct to. Uh, it won't help you with. It won't help you with a SID. Number three is already highlighted. Enter. Enter. Big knob rolls the the selection down. And don't hit enter. So yeah, the knob, there's me the tripping over off. knobs. Yeah. Okay, now we want to go down to the PEBA five departure. And you know that because I just know stuff. <laughs> so what, how would I have known that? But oh, it would be whatever it is. 
Clearance for. Okay, understood. Okay, so enter. Okay, so hit enter. Now it's asking obviously which two. runway. It's three two. Hit enter, and now it's asking you for a transition. And again, ATC would give you that, but you can just punch in Durl. Now let's go to the SID on the on four flight and brief it. It's going to be Pimba five on here. But is it okay? This is a bit tricky because it has three pages, mm -hmm. but so you can read it just so yeah. you know what you're looking at. Depart runway 32, right turn to 191, or as assigned, expect radar vectors to mix it. Okay, and then let's go to those other pages. Mm -hmm. That to fix it. So there's that turn. You were on board and we did this, right? Yep. And then let's look at the other page. I guess what, what's mixed? What's the same about mixed? Uh, it just says, uh, see following pages for transition routes. Okay, so. Oh, shit. That clear, we'll just press clear once, I think. Yeah. Okay. Load. Now, if you, and yes, load it. So load it now includes it in the flight plan. Okay. And now you see that you've got, if you turn the cursor on, you can see that the departure is Pemba 532. Your next waypoint is Mixut. And if you look at the departure procedure on your iPad, you'll see where that is. Okay. So that is cool. So that, that is working how we wanted it to. Yeah. If we were doing this for real, we would have done our instrument check. We would have set up the GPS, checked the database. Yeah. This one, you can't tell what it's on until you finish doing the tests. Oh. On an IFR flight test, if you go enter, 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 and again, yeah, you yeah. failed your test. You need you to read. verify the aviation database is current, huh? uh, not expired. Then when you go to the next page, you need to verify that the communication between here and here is correct, right? Lateral CDI is half left, flag is out of view. Vertical CDI is half up. Vertical flag is out of view. The two from indicator is showing two. Done that thing where we make sure it tells us the thing is Cross deflecting. Da, da, da. Yeah. Talk through all of that. And we didn't do that because I don't think that happens on the sim. Because mm -hmm. it is tempting. It is habit for people yeah. to just go enter, enter, enter. And then that means, okay, fine, but you're not allowed to then do a GPS approach. Oh, yeah. So for a flight test, that's got to be a that's thing. That's a fail. So let's not forget ever in real life to do that. Yeah. Otherwise, well, uh, we've set up our flight plan and we've done our run up and everything else, and we're, we're sitting here on the threshold and we're good to depart. Exactly. You've set the weather to minimums. Yep. Okay. And you want to try hand flying this whole time? Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'll never. It might be fun. It might be. Yeah, might, well, might only last like five minutes. Who knows? I've never like the sim can be a little bit if, too touchy. If it if it sucks, this thing does have an autopilot. Got it. Okay. You gotta go into the virtual screen to use it, I think, though. Okay. But there it is, it's got a heading hold and so on. All oh, right, right, okay. See on the bottom there? Yeah, down here. So if we really want to like make your workload not brutal, you can go ahead and use that, but it's currently disabled. Okay. And we don't have them in the school planes, so we all we have is a heading hold in one of them. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the Pemba 5 departure. You, you quick remind yourself what you're gonna do. Oh, you're gonna yeah. depart, you're gonna make a right hand climbing turn to 191. Mm hmm. Yep, and then we're going to get vectors to mix it. And here's a bigger picture of the overall plan. I'll be intercutting between uh, the Cloud Ahoy debrief here, which really helps illustrate what we're doing. So we're going to hold on the Ancaster inbound for local and two. And I think that's what we did on this flight that I have queued up on video. Okay, cool. Once you get airborne, you're going to get vectors to Ancaster. Perfect. And then you're going to, I'm going to give you a rough vector. Yeah. And then you're going to program it into the GPS cool. and give yourself a track. And then you're going to try to follow that track and not reset the rack two. Like once you get it. Then stick to it. Stick to it. Gotcha. And try to do it. Okay. All while hand flying it, I'll give you altitudes. I'll try to pretend to be ATC. All right, cool. Uh, how do we pause this thing? Because we need to. I think it's P. P? Should I check it right now? All yeah. right, cool. Because <laughs> we're going to need that probably. <laughs> I don't know what screen you want the iPad on. Yeah. For... Oh, this is okay for now. All right, full power. And I'm going to look real fast and I see a 3 2. 3 2, looks three, two good. Zip by. Speed's alive. Temperature pressure is green. Yeah, it's a sim. Anyway. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so you're going to be under the hood real quick yep. here. Okay, so we're in the soup. Alright, so the procedure would be that we would have gotten our clearance on the ground on a day like this, so we would already be talking to terminal, right? Mm -hmm. If it was via fire, we would have departed, talking to traffic, said, okay, see you later, we're only some traffic, I'm now switching frequencies. So now you would come up on whatever it is, 119.3, which we probably should have briefed, and we didn't. Yeah. So that would have been part of our plan here, is to set up frequencies. Alright, so you're going to continue, you're going to do the Pemba 5 departure though, right? Yeah, we'll so just pause this for a second. Climbing right hand turn to 191. Does it show you, it does show you the departure turn, look at that. Yeah, yeah, sweet, that okay. That is exactly what we're doing. Can't really pause stuff in real life though, right? So, 
So what are you doing right now? I'm loading up the departure. The plate? The plate, so yeah. In front of you? Well, yeah, this should have been your briefing, but okay. Yeah. I'll let you have the hook on that. Okay. This uh, is what I wanted to see, right? Yeah, right. Okay. So that was it. We did brief this, but yeah. that's fair enough if you want to review it. Okay. So, yeah, it's the climbing right hand turn to 191. 191. Okay, that's what I wanted. All right, cool. All right, cool. So, that's good. So, you, you set the bug on that real, the virtual instrument, and yeah. it, it changed on the uh, my, my virtual panel there. That's good. Right one turn, coming up on 2000. So, should I bug now 191? Well, first of all, when can you turn on an IFR departure? Is it 500 feet? The default is no no lower than 400 AGL, unless specifically depicted. Uh -huh. And in this case, it actually says uh, 1,001 well, feet, which is 400 feet above the ground in this case. All right. All right, so cool. you're on heading 191. You bugged it? Yep. All right, so uh, at some point, you can check in with Toronto. All right, uh, Toronto Terminal, Alpha Bravo Charlie's uh, 2,500 heading 190. Okay. We would have already had our IFR clearance, so we didn't need to do anything else in terms of cold call, right? Yeah. Uh, so I guess I would come back and say, so you're on your way to the Ancaster Beacon, is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's affirmative. And you're looking to do a hold? Uh, yep. Okay, so initial vectors to uh, Ancaster Beacon, fly heading 240, climb 3000. Uh, 240, climbing to 3000. Climb to 3000. Yeah, so you right. said two. Yep. Busted. <laughs> There you go. So you got your heading bugged. Yep. Nicely done. I gotta keep my so, turns not too steep. Yeah. Okay, so I've bugged 191. Right, I've begun my right turn. Continue to climb. Yep. At a rate one turn. Yep. And well, up to 30 degrees. Uh, on an IFR flight test, as long as you don't exceed 30, it's whatever you're comfortable with. But climbing and banking excessively is counterproductive. 100 feet to go. Good job. So I'm gonna just cue this up to match this point. So what you need to do now is, while I work on this, is get yourself comfortable on your heading and your altitude and then set up your GPS with uh, Ancaster Beacon as your... You comfortable to do that or do you want to yeah. pause? Yeah, uh, let me pause it for a second. Just this trim is pissing me off. Yeah. Um, is your power really high right now? I don't know, I'll take 24. Yeah, let me back it off, right? There's no rush now at your level. Yeah. This thing likes 2350. That's where it's happy. Roger. Every airplane has a happy spot where it just hums. Nothing vibrates. Yeah, that is pretty smooth, isn't it? <laughs> and just loves to throw in those real All right. <laughs> and then what else can you do? Cruise check? Yeah. It's hard to hand fly the sim. The sim, yeah. Okay, I think we got it. Are you on Hamilton right now? If you select arrival or approach? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, ILS 1, 2. Okay, so at this point we're flying with the autopilot and obviously we're tripping over some stuff with the sim setup. I'd love help getting this 430 unit to be primary on the virtual panel talking to the needles and the autopilot. Any help with that would be appreciated. Okay, all right, cool. This makes it a little bit easier now. And if you want to play with the autopilot, so it's in heading mode now, so turn the autopilot on and push the heading thing. selection. Yeah, yeah that's, that's kind of cool. cool. Okay, yeah. yeah. And the heading selection on. There you go, now it's following the heading button. There's no vertical control. Altitude is strictly a function of trim now. But that's a good, I mean, that was harder than real life, mm -hmm. but it's not that much harder in the sense that a lot's happening and you can see how fast you got task saturated just right there trying to maintain heading and altitude while thinking about where am I going next. Yeah. So we're just trying to get ourselves going to Ancaster Beacon, then we're talk about getting the A's and doing those A's and then plan for the hold. All right, so one, two, eight, point one. one. Okay, so we think we've figured it out. We've got ourselves going to ZHA. It required some pausing and some autopilot playing with, but that's fair enough. This this joke is difficult. A lot of people modify the spring in this thing, but that was hard. If you said direct two, would you not expect that needle to snap right to the middle? It's like it's it's direct two from where you are exactly, right? This. Oh well, I had to pause. Maybe that's okay. Right. Oh, right, something happened. Yeah. Okay, so now because your heading is not right, you're right. going to... So, pause for again. Yeah. So, let's just look at this for a second. Desired track is 160. Mm -hmm. Your actual track is 218. Mm -hmm. So, you got to fix that real quick yeah. in, in order to be going direct. Correct, yeah. All right, so are you ready to handle that? And, yeah. And we're back on board. Yep. So, you're going to just set the bug to that and then figure out what it needs to be for wind later. Yeah. So I feel like the educational aspect of what we're doing here is frustrating, but the process of figuring this out has got to help, right? Yeah, and I think what, like right now I'm focusing more on the avionics. Which is all we want. Yeah, exactly, which is yeah. supposed to fly. So that's why the autopilot's helping us here a bit. All right, so what's our distance to, we're 3.7 miles? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that we have that amount of time to 
plan a hold entry. Do you do you know the trick? No. Nope. Do you have a trick? No, nope, I have no tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I have no tricks. I have no tricks. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna hold on the inbound course one two zero. Right, let's mm -hmm. pull the plate up real quick. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna hold on the inbound course of the uh, Ancaster Beacon. No, one seventeen. So our outbound track is two nine seven. Mm -hmm. We're doing standard turns which are to the right. Yeah. The trick that I learned is to use this hand and look for where, where 297 lands. With my trick of the pick outbound direction thing, the uh, just point down to the bottom below my thumb. Mm -hmm. Down here? Yeah. Okay. So that's where 297 lands, which yeah. means the entry will be direct. Direct. So glancing at this, you can, you can already visualize that you're almost there and you're going to obviously make a direct entry. Yeah. Um, in the future, and what I did get Dennis to do to me one time was he purposely vectored me all over the place. Yeah. So by the time I approached the beacon, I was not coming at it from a way I was used to or easy, like yeah. direct. Yeah. So I did have to do this trick and then confirm it was a different uh, entry. Right, okay. So you're gonna, now the briefing of this hold is a standard hold, right turns. Mm -hmm. Two minutes? Uh, this do distance based. Okay, all right. Because we're not doing time based anymore. Yeah. We got GPS. Yeah. So, um, do you want to brief it, or you want me to help you brief no, it? No, you can go ahead and help me brief it. Okay. Yeah. So the idea is that when you get here, you're going to begin your outbound turn to two nine seven, mm -hmm. confirmed by that, right? Yeah. And then you're going to watch your distance on the GPS. Right here, yeah. And you let's do three mile legs. Okay. You're gonna have three miles worth of time to brief this plate. Yeah. Okay. If you run out of time, whatever, fine. You know you gotta turn inbound, and then you can still use the GPS to do your inbound track. Okay. So we have this set. We're uh, outbound. You got the autopilot helping you out. You can yeah. look at your situation awareness or georeference plate, and you have. We're about halfway through. Okay. We're gonna do three mile so legs. So quickly brief the top of the plate. You know you're looking at the correct plate. Yep. We've got the eight is. We pretend we did that. Tire, we have those set up. Yeah. What we want to do right now is set up our loc. Yeah. So one one zero point nine. Set that up on the five thirty up top there, okay. just because we're going to cheat those needles. So it's a bit of a complicated workaround to use the five thirty to control the loc and glide slope needles, but that's what we're doing. And then, by the way, I want to start my turn soon because I'm at two point seven, right? But that's important because we're about to track it. So, okay. So on. All right. So you got to get that in, back into V loc. So V loc the five thirty up there. Uh, do that by CDI. Okay. $500 button. Okay, there you okay. go. Okay, sweet. Cool. So your needle just swung. And I guess so. This is all symmetrical. We'll put the uh, 5, 430 into V loc mode as well. Mm -hmm. I'll flip flop it though, just so it says. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's the bottom one. Okay, cool. Oh, all right. Sweet. Okay. So now you can tell the autopilot to turn inbound to 120 you're far enough away you're too far actually but whatever oh i hear the morse code yeah, it's identifying yeah now yeah. you're gonna fly the needle for fun you might want to hand fly the needle and just for fun okay i mean i don't know right because you're gonna fly the ios once we finish briefing yeah yeah um now you know what let's just keep it a predict this for now I'll, I'll hand fly the ios though okay so finish yeah. yeah so once you know you're inbound and established yeah you're gonna have to slow the autopilot's turn down and follow the needles and you gotta you gotta you gotta couple miles to figure that out right mm -hmm. I'd, I'd make it a little more aggressive left yeah and just be ready to fix it once that needle comes in gotcha all right so I trimmed out most of the plate briefing uh, but anyways you get the idea we flew the hold with the autopilot brief the plate and then Blake tried to hand fly the ILS okay you got a little more in time you still got a mile and a half so I don't know let's talk about the mist uh, this is gonna be climbing to 2800 uh, track 117, which is the same track as going is the inbound, so that's pretty easy. And then we're going to hold at the Binborg, uh, NDB. So we have it briefed. Yeah. So you're pretty close to your three miles. Yeah. So on the next one, do you want to call the tower and ask to do the simulated ILS 1 too? Uh, yeah, sure. So to get the ILS needles, it should work because you dialed it in with the 530 up there. Yeah. So, you so should... we, we switch this over, make sure that this is on nav and not GPS, right? Um, you got to make sure that this says VLOC mm -hmm. and then that says NAP. Yeah, okay. If cool. you press CDI right now, that should change to say GPS. Wait. Yeah. Okay, so cool. that's the $500 button. Yeah. You screw that up, you <laughs> fail your flight test, or you die. Is that why it's the $500 button? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> fail the flight test. CDI is the $500 button. Okay, so right. uh, I would begin your turn. So I would, I would consider hand flying now. 
don't know why I'm so nervous. It's like I can't, I can't crash. I can't like. Yeah. You are on the wrong side now, though. Mm -hmm. So watch your needles. Watch your deflection. Okay. So now it's a question of just get that needle. And I need to start descending at some point. Oh, well, right? you you intercepted. It. It's right in the center. Okay. You're actually above glide path now. So just watch your your. You got to turn right more, right. So maybe you intercept the 30 degrees from now until you get that fixed. Yeah. Now you do have a little bit of situational awareness that's a cartoon, but it's actually pretty good. Is the iPad, you glance real quickly at it, you're going to see where you're at in terms of heading, and you can see that you've got a pretty steep aggressive um, intercept happening here that yeah, you're going yeah. to need to fix. Okay. Because you're okay. blowing past. Yeah, yeah. So I got that. You got too much intercepts, you're pulling through the wrong side. It's okay, you're going to fix it. But this would have been a fail. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get that before the needle hits the wall. No. So see the needle hitting the wall? Yeah, yeah. So your intercept was too steep, right? Okay. I wouldn't have gone more than 20 degrees there. Right. That's fine. Yeah. So, but you got to fix that. You got to turn left now, like well past 120, right? Mm. Turn left way past 120. Okay. So turn okay. left to east. So we're doing this all wrong, but that's okay. Your your glide path isn't so bad. Yeah. You totally blew the low. Like fly heading of east for a while. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, I see it. And again, the iPad is giving you kind of a cartoon, but it's actually pretty good situational awareness. I would hold heading of east for it until you see the needle start moving, mm -hmm. and then start to get ready to catch it. I forget what the rule is when it's however many dots and you're supposed to be within 10 degrees or something, you know, that mm -hmm. whole thing? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just going to descend a little bit lower. Yeah, because you know you're too high, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we're far enough away. We haven't passed the beacon. Wait, did we pass the beacon? I mean, we we're just passing did. it now. Yeah. So we also should have been configured with flaps and so on. Yeah. So this is also a fail by now because we didn't. Uh... Wow, that happened fast. Yeah. Eh? That's wait. crazy because I thought we were f three miles away when we started all this. <laughs> yeah, you, three you, miles you, goes fast when you're doing like. You're, you need to be correcting though because you're on 120 and you need to be on 90 or something. But you got to turn left. Anyway. I'm waiting for that. Yeah. I can, I can salvage it. I can salvage it, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I know, should, should we treat this like real life and just try again? Just say this didn't work? Yeah. Actually, it, now your needle's coming back. Your needle's coming back. Oops. Now get ready to get onto one, two, one, two, zero because you're going to blow through it again. Yeah. That's... And I'm probably below... No, you're good. Yeah? You're on the glide path. Okay. Okay, so now glance at your track on the 430 and get that track to say one, two, zero or whatever 117 which is pretty okay. good okay now fly the needles you got it you're close enough i think this is gonna work but that was nasty it'll be fun to look at the uh the track yeah because you got it you got yeah. it back but that was a fail on both sides for a minute that there. was not fun yeah but you stabilize now do you have any flaps out you want to do any of that no i got no flaps i think the button for flaps is this thing i think i set it to that this one like down yeah hold on a second before we do Right, those are the flaps in there, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna throw some flaps in there. Don't lose your needles. Watch your glide. Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> what the hell happened there? This is the flaps just made you climb. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good... I was stable before I put the flaps in. Which is why you wanna have the sun of the beacon, not now. Yeah, right, okay. Damn it. Well, it's lumber learning, this is good. All right, let's just fucking chop it down. Wow, uh, dude. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Okay, so that worked. You didn't die, but you failed your flight test. Right. You can see if I can land it. Okay. Just for fun. Do you want to give yourself a better view by moving in? No, I'm okay. On the number. <laughs> okay, All right. so... Ooh, okay. I mean, that was some good learning, I think. Yeah, how I did, agree. How did you feel about it? I mean, the, my biggest problem was, again, just trying to figure out what we needed to do uh. to get everything all set up. Yeah. And this... this all I need to do is just practice. And that's why yeah. it's fun to have this thing at home. Yeah. So that was a total dog's breakfast, but it's fun. Yeah. Let's look at the... Uh... <laughs> also, it doesn't look too, too bad, but we started, o okay, we started over here, right? Yeah, so On that's this turn. the problem. So, yeah. so you blew through, and that's where I was telling you, you got to make a 30 degree turn to come back. Mm -hmm. You man you, you kind of managed that pretty well, and then you caught it. And then you got there. And then I put the flaps in and everything went to shit. Flaps, that's hilarious how yeah. fast. And I mean, that that's a good lesson of why you need to be stabilized before you get there. But I don't think the the speed at which that happened in is the real. sim is, is way too quick. Yeah. So in a way, I like that the sim is harder. 
I don't think people realize that a, a sim is freaking. This is harder. Yeah, than, than flying in real life. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So when you asked me if my brain was fried, at first I said no, no, no. But then I thought about it, and like I had that same kind of feeling that you have when you're a little bit overwhelmed and oversaturated in the airplane. Yeah. And 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 yeah, I like how it, it's the same thing on the sim. Yeah. You know, it's I still feel tired. I still feel like I've been exercising my my yeah. noggin, right? So it's realistic enough to at least have the same physiological response, especially with like being oversaturated and trying to figure stuff out. The thing that saved me though is that this P button, the pause. Yeah. <laughs> you can't really do that in a real airplane, right? Right. So yeah, I mean having the debrief of the lesson that matches what we did is very cool that was fun that was all right yeah i mean that's a good first session we were working with a lot of bugs yeah it's uh made me realize how much i need to know the, how to use the 430 like it's i can do it with my eyes closed and that's the that's, whole point of this yeah 